What's up my friends, I'm Big Hush, and I would like to show you one way to make a part four Friday the 13th style hockey mask. If you already watched my part three tutorial mask video, then thank you so much. If you haven't, please hit that link above my face or the link down below my chin. A good chunk of what you see in this video is gonna be similar to what you saw in that video. But here is the mask I'm gonna show you how to make. Oh, don't give it away yet, don't give it away yet. The goal here is to make the mask look like it did at the end of part four, not midway through or you know early on like this one back here if you want to see that you can watch my other video on the part three and four masks here's the part three mask that i made before we are going to do some things a little bit different but the approach is the same you know we're going to sand the entire mask we're going to hit it with a meringue base coat for the color and uh, do some very similar approaches with the vinyl chevrons and adding damage and things like that i'm not going to talk about the mask blank as much as i did in the first video but just know that we're working with the cheap made in china style mask that you see the majority of my videos are based on you can swing for the fences and get fiberglass blanks or resin blanks or you can tone it down a little bit and get something like abs plastic that's a lot more solid um, these are fine to me they're a little flexible but they're solid and they're easy to work with and they're cheap and that's what makes it nice because then you're not under so much pressure if you mess up it's not that big of a deal now you can find these on amazon and ebay and all over the place i also sell them on etsy so if you want to check out my etsy shop there's a link below i'd love for you to buy them from me you can also get your choice of vinyl chevrons along with it if you want to when you order from me but hey that's your choice i'm not trying to sell you on that all right first step is always sanding the mask sand the entire front of the mask until it doesn't shine anymore that's the easiest way to describe it just sand it until there's no shiny reflection surface on the mask you can opt to not sand the mask but your paint is going to be very susceptible to scratches and it's very easy to chip the paint off if you don't scuff up the surface before you apply your paints to make sure it sticks really well so sand your mask now I almost always use 120 grit sandpaper and I would recommend that for you. And because I get this question from time to time, don't sand the back of the mask. Something I got tired of hearing about on my TikTok version of the part three mask is people complaining about no ax mark, no ax mark. Where's the ax mark? You left out the ax mark. There's no slash in the mask. I don't like to be that guy, so I don't reply to the comments, but obviously they weren't really familiar with the film where there is no ax mark up until the end of the movie and it's more prominent in the part four mask. So now we get to put an ax mark in the mask because in part four, the ax mark is there from get go. I use a Dremel because I have a Dremel. It makes life easier, makes things quicker. But if you don't have a Dremel, just use a pair of scissors especially with this type of mask. Now, if you get a fiberglass or a resin mask or something like that, scissors aren't gonna cut it. <laughs> now, just take your time and go slow because these masks do tend to like kind of crack and, and snap the plastic off as you're cutting them sometimes. So just be careful, watch out for that. Then what we're gonna do is bend part of the mask a little bit because you can see in the movie it's offset you know for the impact of the axe hitting the mask you can use a heat gun if you want those are a lot easier to work with if you don't have a heat gun you can just use a lighter especially one of those grill lighters um, i've used that plenty of times to bend the plastic on these masks and just heat it up bend it warp it and give it that offset look Now in my case, it looks like I'm bending it a whole bunch, but this mask kind of settles back as it cools. So it doesn't end up as extreme as it looks when you see me bending it here. I know it looks like I'm going really crazy with it. Now, if you're smart, you'll cover the top three snaps. I rarely do this in my masks anymore. Usually I don't cover them up. I end up covering them in paint through the entire process and have to scrape the paint off before I put the snaps and the straps back on. So if you wanna be smart, cover them up with either some masking tape, or in my case, what I do is buy a bag of balloons and cut the stems off and just put those over the snaps. All right, now we're gonna move on to the base coat. And what I'm doing different in this mask that I didn't do on the part three is I'm skipping the primer stage. We're going straight to a base coat of color. I like to use Meringue to get that aged, uh, sun damaged white mask color, that, that yellowing of the mask. Now, if you're going for actual movie accuracy, you don't wanna do this because the actual process that the mask makers used for the movie was they used an off-white, like a Dover white, exactly what I'm holding here. They painted the mask with that, then they hit it with a very expensive Italian varnish that I'm holding here. I'll put links to this in the info if you want to check it out. But this is all according to blogs and information that I found online. Some of them sourced to the actual makers of the masks for the film. I don't have the time for that, but I did want to try this in a video. That's why I have it because I'd read up on that like a year ago and I intended to make a video where I was doing it exactly the way the makers in, in the movies made it. And I'd made one test attempt and realized it was not going to be easy. Applying varnish to a curved mask 
is not easy at all. Stuff was running like crazy. Anyway, for the purpose of my video, I want to make things cheap and easy for you and accessible. So I say just go with meringue or something close to it. To me, it looks close enough to the color of the mask in the movie. So apply your spray paint, give it plenty of drying time between coats. I always give every coat of paint at least 45 minutes, if not longer, to dry just for my own peace of mind. Now we're gonna put some chevrons on there. We're gonna put the chevrons on basically just to mark where they are, just some light scratching. But I wanna know the area where they are supposed to be. That way I can scratch away some paint and give it a natural breakaway of paint, but still the shape of the chevrons. So you still kind of feel like you see the chevrons on the mask, even though they don't exist anymore. Now, once you know where your chevrons are and you've taken out half of the forehead chevron, now it's time to start adding damage. And there is a lot of damage on this mask, a lot of scratched off paint. You can reference the movie. There's a couple decent stills out there on Google, but also you could look up some other masks that other people have done and just pick the best one. That's kind of what I did. I was looking at different masks other people have done because I've never seen close up, clear shots of the exact mask that came from the movie set, you know, left, right, and center to, to get a really good look of the exact damage that you see in the film. I just use an X-Acto knife. There's a link below in the info. I love using X-Acto knives. Use whatever you've got, sharp tools. If you've got knives at home, maybe even a scissor blade, whatever. You know, part of not putting primer on also helps with this stage, makes it a lot easier to do this much scratching because when you have that primer coat and a base coat of spray paint, it, it takes some, some effort to scrape that paint off. Whereas in this case, it's a little bit easier. All right, now we're gonna add some dirt and we're also going to add some contrast to the damage by using a rag and some gray acrylic craft paint. I buy stacks of rags from Dollar General. Um, that's where I've always gotten my little throwaway rags. They, you know, you can buy them in the stack for five or six bucks or whatever. That's what I use. You could probably use a paper towel or something like that if you wanted to as well. If you have old rags laying around the house, just use those, an old t-shirt, an old sock. Use whatever you got. I use pewter gray on this one. It's kind of a, to me, sort of a dirtier looking light gray, but you definitely want something lighter. We're not trying to go heavy with the dirt and the contrast. And this also does a great job of kind of dulling and dirtying up just enough on the damage areas of the mask. It just sticks to that white plastic so well that it makes it look like a dirty white, which is perfect.
Now, one cool thing I wanted to make sure to do was dry brush some dirt where the chevrons did exist on the mask. What this does is sell the effect of the adhesive from the chevron decals picking up dirt, creating that shadow of the chevrons on the mask. So I think that looks really cool. Now we talk a lot about Jason's mother, but I want to talk about dad. That's D-A-D, -D, damage after dirt. I love doing this. You've seen me do it in almost every mask that I've ever made, but just do some light scratching and, and some, some damage across the dirt paint that you apply to the mask because it, it just adds to the realism and the natural look of it. Because when you think about it, a Jason mask is not going to get dirty and then never get damaged or scratched or scuffed up again after that. No, it gets dirty, it gets scuffed up, it gets scuffed up, it gets dirty. So when you add details like that, those are the things that really sell the mask and really make it seem legit. All right, now here's a cool part. We're gonna add some blood to the mask. I love using barn red acrylic craft paint. I buy this stuff at Walmart. Now, based on my comment sections in the past, I know that the color of blood is a very hot button issue. Let me just say that barn red is my favorite. I think it ends up being a great color for blood when it dries, but if you don't agree with that, then by all means, go find a shade of red that you think perfectly matches the blood that you see in your everyday life. Now, the color of blood is not the only hot button subject because something else that I've seen brought up a lot in my comment sections is how I finish my masks. I love using lacquer. I love using high shine, high gloss finish on these masks. I think it gives it a really professional and really final look. But at the same time, because Jason so often ends up in rain and water and lakes and whatever else, it gives it a wet look, which I think always applies to a Jason mask. But if you don't like that, if you don't want your mask to shine, then get a matte finish, clear coat, put that on there. If you don't even want a clear coat at all, you don't have to have one. The point of the clear coat is to protect your work and to give the mask a shine or a finish if you so choose. If you don't want either of those things, then just leave it be. Now, if you're just spray painting a mask, if all you did was make a mask that only included spray paint, some scratching damage, and some vinyl chevrons, you're probably safe not doing a finishing coat. But if you're using acrylic craft paints like we did in this one, you want to put a finishing coat on there because those are water-based paints. So if your mask gets wet, it's gonna start messing with the paint. Those paints also can be easily scratched. So if anybody scratches it, if you drop your mask or scuff it up, you don't have any layer of protection over the mask. So I highly recommend some kind of finishing coat, but if you choose not to, you choose not to. This last part is totally optional. This is something I like to do. You don't have to do it. Once you put a clear coat on your mask, if you run your fingers over it, you'll feel just like these little tiny burrs. Every little bit. It's not like it's covering the mask or anything like that, but little, little bitty burrs. And if you want to get rid of those, just take a plain piece of paper and sand over the entire mask and you'll, you'll feel the difference. It's extremely hard to convey it in the video. Basically just buffing that final finishing coat. Now, if you protected your top three snaps, then you're gonna be glad you did at this point because you're gonna just pop them off and pop your straps back on. If you didn't cover them up and they're covered in paint, then you need to get your knife and scratch all that paint off so you can make it a lot easier to apply the snaps back onto your mask. How'd your mask turn out? Does it look great? 
Are you working on it right now? I gotta say, I'm pretty proud of how my mask turned out. I'm proud of this thing. I think it looks pretty good. I think it looks pretty close to the movie. I did miss some things. What I realized after I was done that I didn't really pay attention to, there's some areas on this mask that are like sanded off and I totally missed that. All I did was scraping damage with my knife. So be aware of that, just don't forget that. So there you go. I hope that helps you make a part four mask. If this was helpful, please, Drop a comment below. Please like, subscribe, share, do all that good stuff as well. And if you really want to show your appreciation, you can use that super thanks button below my video. I'd be very grateful for that. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Good luck on your mask, and I hope everything is great in your world. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.